The hypnotic hiker presents nature, the drug of choice. Hypnotic trips, if you will, virtual hiking experiences, mind trips that offer a shift in perspective. Basically, these are a series of guided journeys that take you back to your true self. In these episodes, you'll discover the true power of your unconscious mind and how to change old outdated programs from birth that have kept you stuck. You'll enjoy some virtual hikes, some hypnosis, divine interventions. You'll learn walking meditations. By the way, I've been a clinical hypnotherapist since 2002. We'll explore the importance of staying connected or reconnecting to your wild child, to be in touch with our primitive minds, our instincts. We'll talk about how the modern world has tried to change us into cogs of a machine, I'll dive into mass hypnosis and the concept of transhumanism. We'll even explore regenerative ranching and agriculture. The most important discovery you'll have is how to lose your shadow self and how to love yourself again, standing on your own two feet and thinking from your heart mind and speaking with your true voice. I'm Valerie the Hypnotic Hiker. So are you ready for a new relationship with nature and yourself? Come along with me. Hello and happy new moment. Welcome to episode 11, hypnotic tripping, if you will. This one is about how to release anxiety in nature. And the trip happens at the Wichita Mountains near Lawton, Oklahoma, where it snowed the night before. Now, I wasn't expecting the snow, and so I was not thinking right, italicized, that morning when I saw it because the snow was going to interfere with my plans to hike. Maybe you can relate. I was on a mission. We had driven from Dallas to Lawton, got a hotel to get footage for the video I was producing, and the snow was going to ruin it, in my opinion. (laughs) I'm telling you, I got really thrown off. I tried to roll with it, But in the back of my mind, the snow was really throwing off my preconceived idea, those are dangerous, about what this hypnotic trip was about. And the funny thing was, the show was about positive thinking. Anyway, there's a lesson in this. Stay with me. We decided to head for the mountains despite the snow. There was a moment when I was following my friend Brian's footsteps as he, with the excitement of a child, ascended the snowy mound, that I let myself get a little excited about the snow, too. He talked me into going to Elk Trail, and as we walked through the icy wonder to the trailhead, I realized there was not another soul around. I melted. Finally, I relaxed. And in that state of relaxation, I had this thought about one of those Beatitudes. Back in the episode with Devil's Tower, that's kind of when those Beatitudes started downloading to me. So the one that came to me was, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I'm not reading from a Bible, because I don't have one, but... um, That's kind of how I remember that one going. Um, Anyway, so what does this have to do with my thinking? Well, righteousness, as I'm understanding it, as taught by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, means right thinking. It is about whatever thought you want to be something you crave, to hunger and thirst after it. In other words, you want it really badly and are continuously seeking it. The word righteousness in the Bible means more than right conduct, but right thinking on all subjects and in every department of your life. The great truth is that outside things are but an expression or an outpicturing of our inner thoughts and beliefs. So I'm getting some of this from reading a couple of times over the last 20 years Emmett Fox's book, The Sermon on the Mount. I'll put a link in the show notes. That really helped me understand those kind of esoteric beatitudes from the um, King James Version of the Bible. Anyway, so it really comes down to that we enhance or mar our lives with our thoughts. 
We cannot think one thing and produce another. This would be contrary to the law of the universe. What you think in your mind, you produce in your outer experience. And as you continue to listen to this story, please keep in mind that a thought can be both or, either or, positive or negative. So whatever motivation you have is producing your automatic thinking. It's motivating energy, right or wrong, good or bad. Motivation has to do with your desire, your hunger, and your thirst for what you want. So I had an unconscious desire to be upset, to blame the snow for ruining my video. We mostly think of desire as something that we really want, but it's really more about the energy of the emotion that drives us. Sometimes we can have an unconscious motivation for a negative thought. That's what kind of happened to me, and thought follows energy, or energy follows thought. I think it can go both ways. So disappointment can cause us to dwell on the thought that we didn't intend. It hits us when we're caught off guard or caught up in something. That is how negative thought sneaks in, and once in, it persists, because that's all it can do until a better thought takes its place. I've talked in previous shows about psychocybernetics. So the mind is kind of a one-track, positive or negative. So that is why this beatitude is so hard to follow. We can strive to think positive thoughts, but if there's a strong motivating factor for keeping us stuck, it's hard to make that change. And this may make us feel weak-minded and want to give up, but please don't do that. So, do you need more will in your power? (laughs) The secret is to change the motivation, the energy. Hypnosis helps with that. When we do this, we can change our thinking. And it started to happen to me when I was awestruck by the peaceful perfection all around me. I got caught off by a positive experience. And because my energy shifted into that peacefulness and the awe of the icy wonder all around me and the feeling of no other person in sight, that took the place of that past negative motivating feeling of disappointment and the all is lost attitude. All of that went out the window. So nature does really help us in that way. So if you want to control your circumstances for harmony and happiness, you first must control your thoughts for happiness and harmony. And then outer things follow. We cannot think one thing and produce another. That would be contrary to the law of the universe. I realize that habits of thinking are the most difficult habits to break and can send us into self-condemnation, which produces more trouble. Do not dwell upon your past mistakes or on the slowness of your progress. Keep the faith and lose the clock, as I like to say. If you are truly wholehearted in your efforts, that is to say, you are really hungering and thirsting for righteousness, right thinking, then you shall be truly filled with goodness. Claim wisdom, claim power, claim the presence of all that is within you. So from the story, you can see that the trip actually was a pretty great video. I'll put a link to that. You just have to see these images of the snow. It had, it had rained, and so there were icicles on all the trees. And um, as I said, there was not another soul around. There's something very primitive about that because, you know, we we live in such a way that we're constantly bombarded and our souls and our primitive mind and our nature just needs a a moment to, to melt. That's what sleep is for, but we end up 
with lights and gadgets and things. <laughs> so sleep isn't even really so much peaceful any longer. It's not as restorative as it once was. Stepping out into nature has a transformative effect. If you haven't listened to the show from Amy Smiley's book, Hiking Underground, give that a listen. It's wonderfully transformative. It feels like you're right there outside with her as she's reading from her book. Also, if you can't get outside, you know, reading about it, your unconscious does not know the difference between being there or reading about it. This is Valerie Grimes. Remember, nature heals. Get out there. Podcast is sponsored in part by Simply Organic Soap, maker of plant-based organic soaps, lotion bars, salts, and other bath products infused with essential oils to care for your skin and keep you connected with nature. Take a bath on the wild side with the Simply Hypnotic Soap, inspired by me, the hypnotic hiker. You can order this soap and all their other products online at simplyorganicsoap.com and follow them on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date with their latest products. By the way, those products are made in Texas. Mm-hmm.